Hey there, everybody. Good morning. Welcome to our something, something, something Sunday with Friends of the Feather. These are the yard beasts, the floof hounds. Thank you to our 108 subscribers. Greatly appreciate that. We are on our journey to 1,000 subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time, which should come with that, you would think. But hard to say. If you're curious as to what I'm up to, you can scroll down into the description box below and uh, find out what we're all about. Find out. So today, it's 47 degrees. It's supposed to be full sun all day, which is, I'm, I'm hoping that's the case. It's supposed to get to 74, 77, something like that. Hello, Chicones. Pecone Chicones. Looking good, looking good. Looking good in the sun. It's a, it's a bit nippy out here this morning. Had to put my sweater on. Let's see how everybody is today. Let's see how we're doing. I heard them bellowing through the open window. Oh man. Shooting out of the gate. There they are. Good morning, Pecone Chicones. Oh, goodness. Oh, gracious. Oh, goodness. Run, Falco. Run. All these girls. And that wily boy. And he is stalking victims. Meow, meow. Run, girls, run! <laughs> so I heard a really cool story on this something, something, something Sunday. And the story is, is kind of what I've been, kind of the philosophy that I've been adopting with my, uh, with my nutrition. It's the story of this, uh, this plant I do believe it's called kava, and it grows in the Americas, but more specifically Central and South America. And it's a plant that the process, the processing process of this plant was created by native people to the Central South America regions. And it was a, the process of processing this plant was a day long. It took a full day to process this kava. And it was a very lengthy process, a very specific process, very labor intensive. It involved scraping and like crushing. And there were five, four or five steps, maybe more. And they all had, had very specific instructions and they had to be done in a very specific way. Well, Western people came to the Americas and saw what these people were doing and thought it was absolutely ridiculous that there had to be a better way, right? So they took this kava and they started processing it in a way they thought was more efficient. They thought they knew better. So lo and behold, after they started doing this this modern processing of the kava plant, it started killing people and they couldn't figure out what was going on. Well, it turns out that the native people of these areas had learned that kava, if you don't process it in this very specific way, contains cyanide. But the cyanide that it contains is in such small amounts that it just slowly poisons you over time and the amounts of it are so small that they can't even detect that it was the kava that killed you. So the way that the, the native people had 
learned to process this plant was stripping the cyanide from it so it made it non-toxic to humans. But the Western people that had come saw that they were just a bunch, thought that they were just a bunch of dumb natives processing this plant in a more complicated way than was necessary because they were just primitive and didn't have the technology to understand that they could do it in a better way. But the faster way, the more efficient way, wasn't better. And that's the way I feel about modern food. I, I feel like we've, we've convenienced ourselves into an early grave. The, uh, the processing, the, you know, the, the chemicals that they put into the food that allow it to stay on the shelf for weeks and months at a time, that's not natural. And if it's doing that to the food, if it's, if it's preserving it to the point that it can be on a shelf for months, I mean, you think about a loaf of bread, right? It used to be a loaf of bread, I mean, we did projects in school. You put a loaf of bread in a cool, dark place for like three days, and it'll grow mold. Not anymore, boys and girls. Not anymore. I had a loaf of bread in there that it had gotten shoved back into the back of the cabinet, and it was in there for probably... I don't even know, two months or more, maybe, and I was like, oh my god, I expected to pull that loaf of bread, it was nature's own, whole wheat, 100% whole wheat, I expected to pull that loaf of bread out of there, and it would be green, just, you know, like from a from an alien planet, no, it was completely fine, no mold, no, nothing, 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 it didn't even smell sour, <laughs> I was like, this is not the way it's supposed to be. So, I mean, you know, you think, hooray, yes, less food waste. I think, oh my God, what is this doing to my guts? I stopped eating bread a long time ago, but my mom still eats it. So, I get her uh, the whole wheat, and that just creeped me out. It's like those, it's like those th videos that people shoot of, like, ancient takeout McDonald's that they found in a drawer somewhere or something that's 25 years old and they pull it out and there's no mold still looks as perfect as the day they put it together in 1935 so yeah there, that's not natural guys it's not good and I don't think that's the way it's supposed to be and I think that's what's killing us I think that's what's making us all overweight I think that's what's making us all depressed I think it's what's causing all the anxiety I think it's what's causing people to go crazy. I, uh, I, I'm convinced just from my own personal experience with poor nutrition and what it can do to you. I'm, I'm thoroughly convinced that I don't think there's like a, a deadly plot to kill us all through our food, but I think that, you know, the public demands a certain thing. Like the public demands convenience. The public demands, uh, speed the public demands cost effective so when the public is demanding all these things instead of healthy nutritious you know <laughs> healthy and nutritious take a take a more than back seat it when uh you know when the sorry i just got incredibly distracted um healthy and nutritious take a back seat when you know the entire world is screaming for quicker and more convenient. And I think that's what's, uh, I think that's what's doing us in, guys. That and plastics. Sugar, preservatives, and seed oils. Those are the, uh, the three things that will be the downfall of our species. Isn't that right? Parabolabola. Love those feathers, Parabola. You're looking so beautiful. I just love you. Love you, Parabola. So something, something, something Sunday. I've decided that that's going to be our Sunday shows. <clears throat> and it's just going to be whatever I can come up with. I ran out of ideas. If you guys have any ideas for Saturday and Sunday themes for my shows, please let me know, and I'll throw it in there. Because, <laughs> uh, the Saturday summary is good, but I could do that in one segment. Trying to stretch it out is kind of difficult. But something, 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 Saturday, Sunday. Oh, I know. I'm dubious as well. 
Yeah. All right. Well, we're on day. What is this? Four or five of Egg Watch. Come on, girls. Come on. Where's my eggs, girls? Where's my eggs? I don't know. I don't know where your eggs are, ma'am. Don't know. Come on. Come on, Master Blaster Lock. All right, I know we're over 10 minutes, but I don't care. I'm going to go in here and I'm going to look for eggs. So appreciated if you're still with me at this, this late hour. Well, goodness. Pecones. I don't see any eggs. Well, girls. Girls, girls, girls. Oh, they're out of food. I see the hubbub. All right, guys. I'm going to get these guys some food and call it a morning. I will see you this afternoon with the buttons. And then this evening with more antics and fun times with the chickens. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good day.